Hello fellow makers, today I'm going to show you how to design, slice and 3D print this. Let's get to it. Okay, so we start in Fusion 360 and we will design a simple basic bowl shape, uh, designing a profile and then using the revolve tool. We are giving our profile very rough dimensions. We will use the cell tool to hollow the bowl shape. In my designs I found out that 3 mm wall thickness works just fine. We will use the fillet tool to give curvature to our shape and round the edges. Remember, you can always go back in the design timeline, make small adjustments and the design will automatically update. For this design, when exporting to STL, select low refinement. Now let's head over to Mess Mixer. In Mess Mixer we will use the Sculpt tool and then reduce and refine brushes. We want to create random sized polygons next to each other. When applying the dual edges pattern, this will result for larger polygons to larger holes and small polygons to smaller holes. You can change the brush size and strength, play around with those properties and make your own unique shape. While sculpting, try to deform as little as possible the lower hole's edge. This is so that after applying the pattern we get a clean base. This will make designing the E27 not easier. You can preview the pattern by going to Edit, Make Pattern and select Dual Edges. If there are some areas that don't look right, you can go back to the Sculpt tool and make small adjustments. You can tinker with the pattern parameters, but the most important one is element dimensions. You should set that to at least 3 mm. This is so that we have thick pillars and a durable final print. Before applying the pattern, save the sculpted STL. You might want to make small edits and you don't have to start sculpting from scratch. After applying the pattern, go to Analysis, Inspector and Auto Repair All. Then select the whole mesh and go to Edit, Reduce. This is to reduce the number of triangles and make the file smaller and easier to handle for the slicer. One more thing we can do now is go to Edit and select Plain Cut and use this tool to trim the base and have a clean base to later combine with the nut. Now we can save the mesh and import it as reference in Fusion 360 to help us design an E27 nut. In a new design in Fusion 360 go to Insert and select Insert Mesh and choose the mess we just saved from Mess Mixer. We are designing this nut to combine with the mesh so that our lampshade can screw on any E27 light bulb socket that has other threads.
Go to Create and select the Thread tool. The most common E27 thread size is M40 with a 2.5mm pitch. You can use the Press Pull tool to increase the clearance on the threads. The amount of clearance you need depends on your 3D printer's accuracy. Save the nut as STL with high refinement. I will use Idea Maker as my slicer to print just the nut and make sure that the threads have a nice fit. For 3D printed threads, I usually select a 150 micron layer height. Having confirmed that the threads on the nut have a good fit with a lump socket, we can now combine the two meshes in mesh mixer. Make sure that the two meshes are positioned correctly relative to each other, just like they were while designing the nut in Fusion 360. Select both meshes in the object browser and select combine. Then save the final STL file and let's head over to Idea Maker to prepare for printing. In Idea Maker, you can also use the repair tool to automatically repair any small defects. Of course, you can use the slicer of your choice. However, I do have some tips for variable settings for a single model. More on that later. And for those settings, Idea Maker and Simplify 3D were the easiest to use. But first, let's start with a default profile and mention some settings we need to pay attention to. Because of the small print moves, changing the print speed will not affect print time a lot. If you want to lower the print time, it is better to just increase the layer height. A Z-hop setting of 0.4mm will increase the chances of having a successful print because there will be a lot of hopping from pillar to pillar in this print. Also having zero infill inside the pillars will lower the print time. Because the surface area of the first layer is small, using a brim will help with the adhesion to the build platform. In order to have low printing time and clean threads with high detail, we need to have different settings while printing the nut portion and different settings while printing the pillars. To do this, we can use the settings group in Idea Maker. We start by using the free cut tool to split the object at a height just after the nut. Now we will have two parts that we can assign each to a different settings group. For each settings group, we can choose the parameters we want to modify. In this instance, for settings group 2, which is the settings for the lower part, we want to add detail and infill. So we're choosing layer height, first layer, infill and infill type. So up to the height that we made the cut, the layer height will be 0.15 millimeters and 20% honeycomb infill. This will result in a durable base and clean threads. After that height, the settings from the other settings group will be used, which means 0.3 millimeters layer height, 0% infill, and that will result in faster print time.
Please confirm the settings are correct in the slice preview. Then export and save the G-code and get ready for printing. Let's go to the time lapse. That is all. This simply screws on an E27 light socket. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments below and subscribe for more projects like this. Valar Makers!